How's it going folks and welcome back. We've got more Newcastle today. There wasn't an episode yesterday but if you didn't catch it we did a video talking about the tactic that I've been using for the last couple of seasons here at Newcastle. Put a lot of effort into it so if you missed it for whatever reason please do go check it out today. It's episode number 35 I want to say. The end of season number four. I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Let's get into this. So yes, folks, how is it going? And welcome back. First things first, if you missed the Champions League semi-finals, make sure to go catch that today. But you know what happened. If you've seen that episode, we lost. We lost, didn't we? 5-4. And uh, well, as a result, today we are back for the FA Cup final. But, and it's a big but, I cannot lie, we've won the league, everyone. Yes, we managed to get over the line on the well penultimate day of the season. It was kind of already wrapped up, but in our last few games, we ended things strongly. A win against Norwich City secured us the title. Um, it was a very convincing performance. It was a very good performance. And uh, well, as you can see here, we even played a rotated team for it. Um, yeah, really, really happy with that. Most recently, we drew against Man City, a game that had, I suppose, the potential to be a nervy last game of the season. But with the title wrapped up, it was a nice, relaxing affair. And as a result of that game, we come back today ready and refreshed, but with a fair few injuries. So the plan of attack for today is we do the FA Cup final. We demolish Aston Villa, hopefully. And then from there, we've got the end of season wrap up. We're going to go for all the awards and stuff. We're also going to talk a little bit about a potential upcoming season. What's next in terms of the series here on the channel? Um, I hope you're excited for all of that. But anyway, we've got to focus on the here and now. In terms of the team for the FA Cup final, not quite at full strength. Tamori's got a little knock, as has Havertz. As a result, they are only available on the bench today. Elsewhere, Karim Adiemi in the final game of the year against Man City tore his hamstring. That is a little bit of a concerning injury, especially for a player who does rely so much on his explosive pace. Fingers crossed it's not going to ruin him too much. At 23 years old, I feel like he's gone through a critical development phase. If he was 20 years old and this happened, I'd be worried about it holding him back going forward. But I'm trying to remain optimistic, at least for now. In terms of the rest of the team, though, it's very, very standard. Ramsdale and goal, Gvardiol and Fafana at left back and right back. Uh, or I guess left back or right back. They're not the fullbacks, they're the wide centre-backs. You, you know the deal by now. In the centre, Godfrey's back from his broken foot. Of course, that happened earlier on in the year. Nice to see him back in the team. Davies and Liveramento playing in their natural positions. Of course, Davies missed a really critical end point to the year. And I do feel like his presence was missed over the course of the last, well, couple of episodes, really. In the midfield, it's going to be Bellingham and Rice. Yusuf Demir comes in for Havertz, who, of course, as I mentioned, does have that little knock. And up top, Calvert-Lewin is going to play alongside Ransford Yeboah, who I'm playing by virtue of the fact he's played quite well in his last three games. If we look at things here, he got a goal against Manchester United in a 4-0 win, a goal against Norwich City, and a goal against Man City. He's kind of just earned a spot in the team with Karim out injured. Uh, we'll see how he gets on. I feel like at 23 years old, still got room to grow, still open he can grow, but even just as a kind of player as he is right now, he's still quite good. I have always been a bit of a fanboy of his, haven't I? I think, I think I do overrate him slightly. But anyway, let's submit our team for this game. This, as I already mentioned, is the FA Cup final. This is a competition we've won before. It's a competition I want to win again. And against Scott Parker's Aston Villa, I like to think we can do it. It's weird. We are so far in the future, and yet it is Emmy Martinez, Matty Cash, Concer, Mings and Target as their defence. It's kind of crazy. Lots of players in this Villa team who are in the Villa team at the start of the save game, which considering we're four years in the future is kind of puzzling, but also kind of cool to see. I'm going to hope, though, that we do have the quality to dispatch of them today. Um, this is a game that we should win comfortably. Given how this year has gone, absolutely anything is possible, though. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a game where we get a nice early goal and I can just kind of chill out and have a conversation with you guys. Demir takes the ball down well, tries to cross it in, it's going to be blocked. I'm hoping that Ransford Yeboa is going to justify his selection with a goal today. And oh my word, Calvert-Lewin very nearly justified his selection. Emmy Martinez tipped that onto the crossbar. And they've got away, it away from danger, but only as far as a very immediate highlight. Liveramento to Demir, edge of the box, plays it square to Jude Bellingham. Got his back to goal for Fana, of course, supporting Liveramento on the right-hand side. If you watched yesterday's tactic video, maybe you're noticing stuff when we're playing the matches that I talked about in that one. I was really, really happy 
um, with the tactics video that I did. I know I mentioned it in the intro. If you did check it out, thank you for checking it out. If you didn't, if you saw the length of it and got scared, go back and watch it, just like we're going to go back and watch this goal in a replay. It's the man. It's the myth. I'm a genius. Ransford Yeboah makes it four goals in four. And, uh, well, it was quite difficult to miss that chance, wasn't it? I think any, I think I could have been stood there and scored that one. But they all count. He gives us the lead. And now we've got another set piece. Demir whips in. Godfrey hits the crossbar on this occasion. And Laston Villa live to fight another day. Although that another day might come rather quickly here. Demir in possession as the advanced playmaker. Plays it wide to Ransford Yeboah. Who's going to get to the byline and maybe look for Calvert-Lewin. Or give it to Liveramento. And is passed into the middle. And Yusuf Demir is just going to slot it into the bottom corner. Two goals up. 24 minutes gone. Everyone just breathe a nice sigh of relief. It's gonna be it's gonna be a nice, relaxing episode today. No drama. Gonna be honest, would have liked to have been in a Champions League final for this one, but we'll take what we're given. Two goals up, and I think we've got one hand firmly grasping the FA Cup at this point. I do not like, however, Rice picking up a knock. I'm gonna have to take him off. I'm gonna have to bring in Havert to I don't really want to play today, and let's make sure we sub off the right person, shall we? Uh, what is it? I, I, the game is bugging out. You saw it. It wasn't me. Not user error. Okay. Imagine if I hadn't taken Declan Rice off and Bellingham just got subbed off for Havertz. That would have been awkward. Okay, three minutes of added time. I mean, if Villa get one before the break, I do start to panic slightly, given our reputation this year, but hopefully it's not going to come to that. Fafana with the ball gives it to Demir. Back to Godfrey. Can we play it out from the back? Fafana, Godfrey, Bellingham. Options on ahead. He picks out Ransford Yeboah, or rather attempts to. That pass was a little ambitious, and he's uh, or not picked out his man. Villa maybe now can build from the back, although Emi Martinez looks like he's time-wasting in uh, the first half, which when you're two goals down, your goalkeeper time-wasting probably isn't what you want to see. Just like we don't want to see Matty Target here giving it to Condogbia. Samuel Lino crosses it in. Ing scores. It's 2-1. Should I be nervous? I'm not nervous. Okay, maybe, maybe I am a little bit. I mean, they've not created a lot, but that was as easier a chance as they're going to get. Danny Ings, even with a knock, able to score there. And it is 2-1 at the break. And you know what? I'm throwing a water bottle. Actually, no, I shouldn't. But I've got a lot of pent-up rage from this season. I've thrown it. Yusuf Demir is the only person to react badly. We've cheered him up. I feel better throwing a water bottle. The players have reacted well. Only 2-1 up. Pathetic. 20 minutes left in this game. They've not created a lot. We've not created a lot. Now there's a set piece. Don't do it to me, football manager. Don't do me like this. We've played better in this game. I will say, second half, we've not done nearly enough. And uh, this concerns me, oh my word. What a tackle by Fafana, though. That is as good a tackle as you're going to see. Can we maybe now spring the trap? Get on the counter-attack, try and get in behind. Liveramento's certainly going to try. That is a ball to Ransford, Yeboah, and a half. And that, my friends, is a finish in a half. He smashes it in off the underside of the crossbar. And you know what, Ransford? You can punch the air in jubilation. I'll allow it for that. Liveramento... Brings it all the way down to the byline and just sees this passing lane open up. Perfectly weighted pass. Ransford Yeboa hits it and, wow, well, cannons in off the crossbar to make it 3-1. And with 20 minutes left, I think we can be calm. Conta, by the way, on a 5.9. Right, 10 minutes left in this game. I'm going to just rotate it. Luca Dean, on your come. Elsewhere, Bellingham struggling a little bit. I've lost my faith in him after the sending off incident. So he's just getting subbed off here. Just for me to prove a point, but with, well, a two goal lead and only minutes remaining, we're going to win a trophy to end the year. We can add the FA Cup and the Premier League this season to our trophy cabinet, along with the Community Shield and the European Super Cup for what they're worth. Are they worth anything? I don't really value them as competitions, but you know what? They all count. The game thinks we've done a quadruple. I'm going to claim it. And with that, we can hoist the FA Cup for a second successive year. And whilst it doesn't really make up for the disappointment of the Champions League, we can at least enjoy this moment. We can view this game with a smile on our faces. We, it was a comfortable game in the end. They never really looked like winning the game, Villa. And uh, it caps off what 
that's still been a very, very good season. I mean, we've won the Premier League for the first time. That in itself is pretty difficult to do in Football Manager against the big dogs. This makes me a little bit happy. Back-to-back -back FA Cup winners. Yes, sorry, Villa. They almost got it for a second time in three years, but we've denied them in the final. The board are delighted by it, and I'm pretty delighted about it as well. Now, hopefully, we're going to have the end-of-season ceremony kick off any moment. Football Manager, if you, if you want to give it to me, I'd be very happy. And, of course, just as a little reminder, we got a lot of money to spend this year. So, let's wrap through this rather quickly. End of season review. Four trophies, as we said. Two of these are well, the Community Shield and the Super Cup, but they all count in terms of new signings this year. Of course, Alfonso Davies came in. Yusuf Demir came in. Look at the ratings, actually, of our big additions. Kai Havertz, Bellingham, Fafana, Demir, Davies. That's some pretty big heavy hitters. And Ramsdale as well, who, I mean, look, he got the Golden Glove Award in the Premier League. He's considered a world-class goalkeeper. He has had some wobbly moments this year, but in general, he's still been very, very good for us. And I've been particularly happy with what I've seen from him when he hasn't been having mistakes. Um, Davies ended up winning best new signing, but Demir, not a million miles away. To be honest, all of the players had a, a desired impact. They all definitely offered us something. In terms of the transfers out, just for those people wondering, um, Villagra got six goals in six for Leipzig, so not too bad for him. Michael Enko only played 14 games, considering we sold him for 40 million. That's not too bad. Mukiele, of course, left the 53 million. He played okay. Similar for Gabriel Barboza. Did okay. And uh, Jamal Musiala, we kind of have to just acknowledge him here. 16 goals, 11 assists in 54 games. Good. Not great. Not sure. That's £106 million well spent. But maybe I'm still just bitter about the Champions League final. I don't want to give United any credit. In terms of the end of season standings, I mean, in the Premier League, we ended up finishing four points clear of Manchester United. Liverpool completely collapsed at the end of the year. We ended up finishing eight points ahead of them. Only three defeats all year, all away from home. Two narrow 2-1 two defeats. Of course, those came back to back in a singular episode. But despite that, over 90 points, a really, really commanding season and a plus 72 goal difference. Ain't too shabby. Adiemi was the top goal scorer with 26 goals. And in the Champions League, whilst yes, we didn't make it through past the semi-finals, we gave it a good go. That 4-0 home win, just not enough. But in general, we were very, very impressive in Europe. We comfortably got through our group stage, dispatched of Liverpool away from home, which was a memorable game in itself. And uh, I don't know, it's disappointing not to retain it, but retaining the Champions League is always so, so difficult in Football Manager. And as we learnt, all it takes is one particularly bad game, and it's game over. From a financial point of view, if you were wondering who sells the most shirts, it's Adiemi, followed by Calvert-Lewin, Bellingham, Yusuf Demir and Havertz. This year, the board pumped in a load more sponsorship money than they have done previously. Of course, just as a little reminder, with the way that kind of wealthy owners like Newcastle's work in Football Manager, whenever you start failing financial fair play, or if there's even a chance of it, the game just generates new sponsorship deals. Usually it just lists it as like European telecoms company. It's a shell company. It's just a way that the owners can circumvent the limits on how much money they're allowed to put the club into the, well, how much money they can put into the club directly. Teams use it in real life all the time. It's kind of weird that it's allowed, but I kind of appreciate Football Manager for just accepting it. I mean, as you can see here, we got one new sponsorship deal worth 60 million. Uh, thank you to the board. So from an accolade point of view, I won Manager of the Year again. I'm bloody brilliant. I do feel like we did really, really well this year, actually. Whilst I wanted to win the Premier League and that was always the aim, our squad probably is lacking a little bit of quality versus the likes of Liverpool and Manchester United. However, with the money we've got to spend in the summer, with the money we have already spent, I feel like we are in a prime pos position now to really build a team that can install a bit of a legacy in the Premier League, a team that is going to be capable of winning it for the, hopefully the next decade. That is my aim in terms of the position I would like to leave the club in. Of course, the way Football Manager's Manager AI works, all my work will probably just get sabotaged immediately. So looking at player awards, Calvert-Lewin won Fans Player of the Year, Adiemi won Young Player of the Year, Davies, as we already talked about, won Signing of the Season, Top goal scorer went to Adiemi with 47. Luca Dean still managed to muster up 21 assists this year. Yeah, he was still pretty good. And uh, Martin Johansson, most passes completed per 90. Well done, Martin. You've won an award. It's not the most glamorous, but he's had a good first year at the club as Martin. And of course, just a little reminder, Yusuf Demir signed in January. 
144 million pounds. Did he live up to that price tag? Uh, hmm, maybe not. Maybe not. But he's still bloody good, isn't he? We'll give give him the first six months to settle in. The new season is the one we're going to judge him on going forward. So in terms of expectations for the coming year, um, you can see some of the club culture stuff here. Sign high rep players, make the most of set pieces. I love the fact the board want me to spend the original transfer budget. Just as a refresher, that's £161 million. That's a few very good players that we can add to the team this year. And also, we have so much free on the wage budget. They gave us an extra million on it because why not give us an extra million pounds on the wage budget and in terms of the expectations that wants to win the premier league continue to win it and for the end of next season reach the final of the champions league yeah the the expectations have suddenly i feel like jumped up over the last year or so so just have a little look at the player stats for you player stat nerds out there goal scoring wise adiemi really led the way this year although calvert lewin still managed to get 30 goals in all competitions Sesco and Havertz getting a decent amount as well, um, especially for Sesco, considering how much of a rotation option he was, really contributed quite a lot. As did Ransford Yeboah, to be fair. Um, this year we did rotate the team a fair bit, perhaps not as much as previous years, but I felt like that was just a case of we didn't really need to quite as much. The fixtures, I don't, I don't know, they felt more spaced out this year, which I don't think they actually were. From an assist perspective, really cool to see such a wide variety of assisters, especially a handful of players getting into double figures. Um, of course, when you're a football team like we are, you don't really want to be relying on one individual to create everything for you because opposition teams are going to be able to try and nullify that player. So by having our threats really spread across the pitch, it makes teams' jobs pretty blooming difficult. When it comes to high, highest average rating, Luca Dean is actually right up there with an 8.04. Then it's Adiemi, Calvert-Lewin, and also Alfonso Davies. Talked about Demir and said, has he been a bit disappointing for the price? Um, now that I look at it in context, perhaps not. Whilst his goals and assists aren't the craziest, to get a 7.47 average rating, which is the fifth best in the team, considering he was signed so late in the transfer window, that, that's a pretty good sign of him adapting to the team. Hopefully going into the next year, he's only going to get better. So for my player of the year, I'm just going to give it to Adiemi. It's a shame he's got injured to end the year, but make no mistake, he's been top quality this year. He's been a man who... I don't think we could have lived without, certainly wouldn't have won the Premier League without him. In terms of my young player of the year, um, I'd probably give it, you, you know who I'm going to give it to, you know, don't you? It's going to Martin. Martin, you've won young player of the year. Give him a round of applause, everyone. And uh, in terms of signing of the year, I'd actually give it to Kai Havertz, I think. I think Kai had a, a quite difficult job because he was coming in directly to replace Musiala. He got 12 goals in the league, three assists, three player of the matches, a good average rating. Managed to get, well, a handful of goals across just a wide variety of competitions. Five assists in the Champions League as well was really, really good for us this year. He was one of the reasons why we were able to score as many goals as we were. And uh, yeah, I feel like he plugged a gap that was created really, really well. Um, and at 25, I mean, he's still got his best years ahead of him. So all of that is kind of the here and now, but I know there's going to be people wondering, Jack, what's next with this series? What's going to be coming up on the channel? You know, what are your general plans right now? Um, the honest answer is, I think we've got one year left at Newcastle. I always said this was going to be a five-year project to win the Champions League. I'm aware that we did it ahead of schedule. Um, at the same time, I feel like there's still stuff to do here. I would like to try and win everything in one year. I feel like having one more season where we kind of go for broke is probably the coolest way to end it. Of course, we've got so much money to spend, we can be a bit silly if we want to be this summer. So tomorrow's transfer special might be a little bit off the rails. Uh, in terms of what else is going on, I've had a lot of people ask about Park to Prem. I appreciate a lot of the people asking about Park to Prem maybe aren't watching this series anymore. So I'll probably have a video that I drop in the next week or so about that. Essentially, there is no tier 10 database for Park to Prem to start on. And even when there is one, it needs to be tested. There needs to be work that goes into it. I think looking at the bigger picture at this point, it's probably not going to be happening until January. If we've got one more season left of this, there is the inevitable question of, Jack, what happens with New when Newcastle ends while we're waiting for Park to Prem? I've got plans there. I'm not ready to share them yet. But, you know, if you're looking for a slightly different save game, I'm aware of that. And there is going to be some more kind of slightly different stuff coming sooner rather than later. In terms of next season here at Newcastle, um, the season 
is going to be probably covered in slightly fewer episodes, a little bit less of a focus on the league now that we've won it. I think the big thing is to try and win the Champions League and just try and win as many cup competitions as we can. Um, that said, I don't want to rush through the season, um, but I'm aware I can look at the YouTube views when we win the Champions League, and this happens with any series, people kind of stop watching. And I don't really get it. I guess to a lot of people, winning the Champions League is the end goal of a save game like that. So once it's achieved, people kind of shrug their shoulders and go, well, what else is there to do now? In terms of my aim for next year, I want the unbeaten season in the Premier League, if possible. I want to win the Champions League. They're kind of the two things that I'm shooting towards. Um, hopefully, we're going to be able to achieve them because, as I said, I'm kind of settled now that next season is going to be the last one. That all said, of course, once we finish our last season, we will holiday forward to see what the fruits of my labour produce and kind of what happens in, well, Newcastle after I leave. How is the AI going to just ruin all of my work, basically? Anyway, I hope that provides just a little bit of clarity going forward so you can know what to expect. One more season of Newcastle, one more summer of going nuts next episode. I'm a little bit excited for it. I hope you are too. And if you've got to the end of the video, thank you for sticking around to the end. I appreciate this has been maybe a slightly longer episode, a bit more of a talky episode, especially towards the end of things. I appreciate you sticking it out to the end. Um, I'm glad that you're enjoying this series, which I assume you are, unless you've just fallen asleep and the video is still just playing to no one, in which case this is really awkward right now. Anyway, guys, that does wrap up everything from me today. If you've enjoyed the video, do drop a like on it. I know I say this every day, Likes genuinely do impact the YouTube algorithm in massive ways. So those of you who like the video every day, thank you. I love you. If I could give you a hug through the camera, I would. Um, hmm, that's got a bit weird, hasn't it? I'm going to leave things here. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Transfer special tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. I'm out.